looking to build a clean, modern website for your brand or business, but not quite sure how to build said website? Well, today I'll take you with me inside of Squarespace, show you the back end and the site editor, and walk you through a beginner's tutorial for building your website on Squarespace. So let's get started. So to start with building your website, you want to head to squarespace.com. And from there, you'll come to a page which looks a little bit like this, and you wanna click on the Get Started button. From here, it's going to ask you for a little bit of information about your website so it can make recommendations for you. Now for this example tutorial, I'm going to make a website for a hotel. So I'm going to select the travel option, but select whatever makes sense for you. And then let's talk about what are the goals for the website. So for me, I want to actually get people to book. This is promoting a physical business. Good. Now, there's two options for getting started. One is to choose one of their example templates, which they have. And then the second one is to build a custom template with the Squarespace Blueprint. Now, to give you a little preview of what each one means, or I'll start with Squarespace Blueprint, actually. Basically, you select a few demo layouts and it sort of puts together a little template for you. Whereas the choosing one of the standard templates is choosing from a selection of templates which already exist and are available. Um, honestly, which one you do doesn't make that much of a difference. You'll get to the same place in the end. And my hope for you is that as you go through this tutorial, you will learn how to truly customize your own website no matter what the starting point is. So for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and select the choosing a professionally designed template. Now, this brings us to the templates page, and there are a lot of templates that Squarespace has available. Now, I have an entire other video on how to choose the right Squarespace template because the way that most people choose a Squarespace template and the way you should really choose a Squarespace template are two totally different things. So do, I will link that up for you above here. Do go check out that video if you're unfamiliar with what best practices are for choosing a template. I will give you the very short version here. Basically, you want to choose the template, which is the closest style-wise to the end result that you want. You do not need to choose a template where the demo content fits the type of business that you have. So say, for example, this one right here is clearly for some sort of um, financial advising services. If you're a financial advisor, you don't need to choose that template just because the example content is the type of business that you run. So again, choose a template based off the design. And if you want more details on the theory and the why behind that recommendation, again, I'll link the other video, which goes in depth on picking a template um, above. So I'm going to see, I like this template right here. So I'm gonna start with this one. So go ahead and pick whichever template, again, feels style-wise closest to what you want. I am going to, what should my hotel be called? So we're just gonna click through those items there until we get to the actual page and editor. So let me give you a little walkthrough and tour of what you're seeing here. So the first thing is that you'll notice that it says, I have a trial and it's 184 days long. <laughs> now I'm a Squarespace Circle member and that is a organization of professional Squarespace users and that's why I have such a long trial period. You will likely have a two week trial period on your website. Though do know that you can message Squarespace if as you go through building your website, you realize, oh, I need more time. You can always message Squarespace support on their live chat. I will link that also up above for you. Message them on live chat and ask them to extend your trial if you need a bit longer to build your website and they are typically very happy to do so. So I'm going to close out this banner for now. And it's also letting me know that the website is private. So basically no one online can see this right now. So just know that as you're building this, you don't need to stress about someone accidentally getting to the website. So I'm gonna close that one too. And then you'll notice on the left-hand side are all of the editor options. So this, as you click into each one of these different items, it gives you basically the options to edit the website. So in pages, we have all of the pages that exist on our website. 
If we go under commerce, this is if you want to sell something specifically through your website. These are all the settings to do so. If you go into design, and again, we're going to, as we go through the tutorial, come to each one of these options. This is where we set the styling options like colors and fonts and spacing and those sorts of things. It's under the design tab. Marketing is everything, all of the different tools which Squarespace has to help you market your business. So that is like SEO, email campaigns, pop-up banners, announcement bars, those sorts of things. So again, just know for now, this is your main navigation and we'll go through the different bits and pieces as we go through the tutorial. Then the other thing to know is that on the right hand side of the screen, this is where your actual demo website lives or really, I mean, exactly what your website would look like if you posted it on the internet right now. You'll notice up here in the top right hand corner, we have two options, desktop view and mobile view. So if you toggle between these two, you will notice that the preview changes to either desktop or mobile. And again, we can also edit in both of those options. So we can edit the desktop version of our website and we can independently edit the mobile version of our website, meaning that what happens on your mobile site doesn't need to be the exact same as what happens on the desktop. Because something sometimes what looks good on desktop doesn't look good on mobile, so we can tweak that. Then the other thing to know is if you click on the option up here, it'll open the, uh, it'll basically get rid of the um, backend management navigation on the left-hand side and open your website up full screen. And then if you click the arrow again, it'll go back to giving you all the editor options on the left-hand side again. Now you'll notice as I click around the website here, it actually functions like the actual website. So I can click into the different pages, for example. But what if you want to edit, say, travel and stay, and you want that to say something different? That's when you click up here to the left-hand side on the editor button, it opens into full screen view. And then you'll notice as I scroll down the page, I get these blue bits as I hover over different items. That's how you can tell that you're in the editor and not just sort of the previewing the website as a real website website viewer. So I'm going to exit the editor for now and we're going to come back to that later. The first thing that I typically recommend that you do when you build your website is to set all of the design site styles first. So I'm going to click over here to design and then into site styles. And here we have a whole lot of options as you click into these for the different styles on your website. Now, if I click into fonts, for example, let me just preface this by saying you can edit literally every single style on this website. There are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of style options um, inside this style editor. It might seem basic at first, but again, know that as we click into these different bits and pieces, we get into the advanced options. And again, we can change pretty much anything. So let's say, for example, I am not loving, actually, I do really like that font. No, I mean, you know what? I'm going to leave the font because I quite like the font. But let me just show you, for example. So right now we have the font pack, which has been, uh, which came with the template. However, we can change that if we didn't like it. So let's go over to switch font pack. And we can see here, it has a bunch of sort of font pairings, which it's put together, which Squarespace thinks look really great together. And as you click through them, it will actually change on your website as well. Now, let's say for example, that you didn't actually love any of the automatic font packs that it, has, that it has here. Don't worry, there are many more options. So we can hit the back button out of the font packs and we can go down to the global text styles. And then we're gonna click into say, for example, our headings, so that's the larger text on the page. And then we will click into the name of the font, which we currently have. And from here, if I click on browse all fonts, you will notice that I get the world's longest <laughs> list of fonts. There are truly tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, I don't even know, an absolute zillion font options that you have here. Now it can be difficult because there are so many options to choose what you like. Again, if you were to click on any one of these, it would change automatically on the page. So you can see an example of this font on your website. It actually looks quite nice. So again, you can scroll through and find your favorite ones. A resource which I did put together, if you use Canva for your website graphics and Squarespace for your website, oftentimes it is very logical to make sure that your fonts in your graphics match the fonts on your website. So if you're wondering what are all the fonts that exist both in Canva and on Squarespace, I actually put together a PDF which says exactly the giant long list of all the ones which exist on both platforms. So do click up above or I'll link it in the description below as well. If you'd like to grab a hold of that PDF, it will help you with choosing the fonts. And if you find a font in that PDF which you really like, you can just go ahead and type in the 
name and search the font here and it will bring up the fonts. You don't need to scroll through the absolutely massive long list to find it. So do know that you can choose the font packs. They're really easy. They're very simple to choose. I mean, Squarespace has chosen well-fitting fonts for you, but if you want some advanced options, that's how you get into all of the font options that they have. And again, there are a zillion font options. So what you want to do is change up your fonts. If you don't like the automatic ones, you have quite a number of options here. So you can do things like you can change the weight of the font. So say you want it to be a little bit more intense. You can see as I'm clicking here, it's changing over here. So just find a weight that you like. You can also do things um, depending on the font. Some have an italicized option, some don't. This one doesn't seem to have it. The line height is the spacing between. So if you had, let's say, two lines of text here and then another line just below that, how much space is between those two lines of text. You can also change up letter spacing. So it is how much space is between each letter. For most often, honestly, I would say keep it pretty close to the zero EM, um, unless you're maybe doing something really creative in a heading, but generally, especially for your paragraph text, you want it to be pretty close together. Otherwise it starts to look really odd on the page. And then under text tra transform, this is where you have the option. If you always want, say for example, these headings to be uppercase, you could select that. Granted, I personally like the freedom of just leaving it as none. And if I want something to be all uppercase, just when I type in the text, I do it with all uppercase. Then the other thing which you have the option to do is to change the size of each heading. So in Squarespace, you have four different headings, heading one, two, three, and four, and each one has an automatic size. Okay, so as we can see, as I pull this slider here, we can see that this text on the left is changing size, which means that that has been set to be heading two. If I select this one, I can see that it is, that looks quite nice. The text on this area is heading number one. So you can go ahead and play around with the different sizing options to see what you prefer. I'm actually quite into, this is a bit of a trend right now, is really bold text on a website. Um, I'm going to leave that as is for now. So I'm gonna go back and do know that you can change up the text of your paragraphs. So that's this say smaller font right here or the fonts right here. This is paragraph text. Again, you can go through and change that up as well. And as we come to pages which have buttons, here's an example of a button. We can also change the text on that as well. And again, it's a bunch of similar options. And in Squarespace, you have three different buttons. So if I click in here, change this. No, that's. I'm just watching to see over here when the button changes and I can tell then which button that is. must be button three. There we go. Okay. So that one is set to be button number three. And so the reason that there's three different button options is basically if you want some of your buttons to, for example, have one text, but some buttons to have another text, that's why it gives you three different button options and you can change up the details and font on that. If you want to, we can also change the colors, which then brings me actually, let's talk about colors next. So over here in colors, this automatically has a color palette which has been created, which fits to this specific template. If you're not, however, loving these colors, then we can go ahead and edit the palette. Now, what you can do here, there's a few different options for choosing your colors. The first option is to, it's very simplistic, <laughs> basically pull this little toggle around this color viewer and select a color which you think looks good. Now. That's very simplistic, that's very easy. If you haven't had your branding professionally done or anything, then that's kind of a quick and easy way to pick some nice colors is just by selecting the different options there. The other option which you have is to select pre-made color palettes. Again, these are presets done by Squarespace of colors that look really great together is what Squarespace has found. I actually liked, oh no, where was it? That one I quite liked. So one option is selecting a preset. The other thing which you can do, and I would say this is probably the most practical um, option and definitely especially if you've had your branding done or again, if you want your website to perfectly, the color of say green, for example, of your brand, if you want that to perfectly match the color of green on maybe an Instagram post which you've done, then what you can do is choose this option here. So a hex color code is basically a random string of numbers and letters, which very specifically 
um, determines exactly a certain shade of color. So that means if you had your branding done by a logo designer and they gave you a, they, you would ask them for the hex color code. So they probably already gave you the hex color codes. You can paste in the hex color code here. And that means that exactly the right shade of green, which they've used on your branding, you can use in your website. Now, the way that the palette works inside of Squarespace is we have our colors going from lightest over to darkest. Now, typically I would say you really want maximum like three main colors in this color palette. Um, and then I find that having a white and a black is also very helpful. So I tend to leave the white and the black and then just in here in these three. So as you go through, we would then choose a different, oops, but I wanna actually stick with this whole like lighter, middle color, darker, and then black on the right and white on the left. So do go ahead and select through these different options and then choose the colors which you'd prefer. To make it easy on myself for this video, I'm just going to choose a preset palette. Do I like that? I think I do. There we are. Okay, the other option which you have is to select a color from an image. So say for example, if maybe your brand designer created you a brand, a logo for example, and they didn't actually tell you the hex color codes, what you can do is you can upload an image of say your, well really anything. Say you wanna upload an image of your logo, then you can choose the color from within the logo. So. So what happened there was as I uploaded this image, you'll notice in the image on the bottom right, there's some green, some white, some beige, and some like darker black colors. What Squarespace has done is it pulled the main colors out of this image and then basically inputted it into the color palette. So that's another option. If there is an image or your brand design or whatever, you can upload the image of say your brand design mood board, and then it will go ahead and pull the main colors from there as well. Next, when we head back to site styles, you'll notice a few other options. One of them is spacing, buttons, and image blocks. So let's go into spacing. Inside of spacing, the page width max, this is actually just set to be what is best practice for website design. So I'm actually just going to leave the 1800 and I would suggest you do as well. When it comes to the site margin, this is basically how much space is automatically put on the left and right hand side of the page at all times. Again, I'm actually going to leave that what it was originally, where was it? if you wanna get rid of something actually. So I'm just gonna click this little X here and that will set it back to what it was before. So for VW. And my reasoning for leaving that, basically all of that the way it is, is it's set to be site best practice. And if I did want to do something, for example, like having this button a little bit more in or having the content have a bit more space on the left hand, right hand side, right hand side we can do that in another way, which is a bit more flexible. So I'll come to how to do that later on in the video. So heading back to site styles, let's also quickly go to buttons. So you will notice again, I mentioned we have three different button types. You can choose some different options for those buttons. You can choose what shape they are. You can choose if it's just an outline or if it is a full filled in button. Choose if there is an outline around the button. And again, you can change up the text as well if you want to too. And you can do that for all three different types of buttons in your website. Next for the image block option, I'm actually going to leave this the way it is for now until we get around to image blocks. Basically what I would say for this section here and these style settings is only change these if you're unhappy, if when you're using the image blocks, you're noticing that something you're not really pleased with, then just know that these there the option to change some of the design of your image blocks is there so i'll just direct you to come back to this later if that is something that you find as you're building your website you actually want and need so i'm going to close this for now and click on save so we save all the changes which i made Okay, and then into the pages section, the first thing which I wanna show you is the different options down here on the left-hand side. So we have our main navigation, our members area, and our not link section. So what does that mean? The main navigation is, as you would expect, the items which appear here, appear up in our top navigation here. 
members area is again, as I mentioned, if you, for example, want to have some of your content behind a paywall, which only members can access, that would live in the members area section. And then our not link section is the one that confuses people often. And basically this is pages which exist on your website, but which don't make it into your top navigation. The best practice for websites is not to have every single option up in your top navigation. It's to have the most important options up in your top navigation. And then to have all the other pages on your website linked to from different areas of your website or maybe your footer as well. How you set up your navigation is actually extremely important to how many sales your website is going to make. I worked on a client project where I completely overhauled and redesigned their entire website and a huge focus of that was improving their navigation. And just from the site redesign, they doubled their Black Friday sales. So don't underestimate the importance of doing this correctly. I do actually have a training, which I put together on four simple steps to double your site sales. I will link that for you up above if you're interested to know sort of the strategy behind putting together your website and the decisions which you should be making and the best practices for say laying out the navigation or displaying your products or um, your call to action buttons or whatever, do check out that training. That will help a lot for you. But in terms of practically, what you should know is that if you click something and you drag it down here, for example, it will then disappear from the top navigation. Now, if I wanted to create a new page in my top navigation, I would click on the plus button and then I have a variety of different options. So a blank page is what it sounds like. It's just a page. <laughs> Page layouts, basically it helps you to design a page a little bit easier. So you can kind of select from some pre-created layouts. The blog is if you want to have a bunch of say articles and a collection of articles on your website. The store is if you want to have products. Portfolio is if you want to show some sort of work like a uh, uh, photography portfolio, for example. Events is basically a calendar. And then the other thing which I should draw your attention to is the folder. So say if you want a drop down menu. So say for example, you wanted stay with us. And then we wanted a few different options. So we wanted maybe rooms as one page and we wanted rates as another page. And then maybe like, what else would we have? Whoops. Um, for example, so when I create a folder, what that does is it creates the drop down menu in my top navigation. But again, whether or not you should use the folder or if that's beneficial or not beneficial, do watch the training for simple steps to double your site sales and that will help you make a lot of the decisions related to your navigation. Next, let's come to editing content on the page. So if I actually want to change up what is happening on the page here, I'm going to go into the page which I want to edit and click on the edit button. And again, I know I'm in the editor when these blue bits start appearing as I scroll over the page. Let's say for example, that I want to add some text to the page in this section here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the add block area and you will see I get a giant long list of a whole lot of options. And this is basically all of the different types of content blocks, which you could add onto your page. So we have text and images and forms and videos and audio and scrolling and lines and shapes and newsletter blocks and maps and a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, the ones that you will use most frequently are the ones towards the top. So like text, images, buttons, videos, uh, newsletter, forms. Those are honestly the most common ones. But as you scroll down, you do get into some quite specific ones as well. I won't go through all of them with you today, but let's start with the text block. So when I click on the text block, it automatically adds a little section here with a blue line around it. And when I click in here and ta -da, okay. So I have typed in my text block. If I hover my mouse around the sort of blue edge, I can click, the hand appears, and I can click and drag this around. If I drag down sort of below where the section um, ends, it will actually extend the section as well as I do so. If I want to change the font, maybe I want this to be a really huge font, for example, I could select a different heading type which I would prefer it to be, but actually let's just go for paragraph two for now. And then I have your typical text editor options, things like alignment of the text, bolding or italicizing the text. So if I selected the text, 
click italicized, it would do so. This is to stretch the text into, to basically fill the size of the box. And so if I change the size of the box, whoops, then the text size would change too. And if I want to delete that text, then I would just go ahead and click on the little trash can icon. Next up and very important is adding images. So let's say I want to add on, actually, no, I'm gonna scroll down here. Let's say I want to add on an image to maybe lodging recommendations, for example. So I'm gonna click on add a block, I'm going to select the image block. I'm gonna click the plus button, upload a file. The other option I do have though is to select from library. So you remember, so here are the assets in my asset library. So say if I wanted to, for example, just choose a photo which already existed on my website or which I've already previously uploaded to the website, I can go ahead and select it there. So that's one option is to select it from your asset library. The other one is to upload a file. So that is choosing an image off of my desktop, for example. And then your final option is to browse stock images. So this here is so exceptionally handy. This is powered by Unsplash, as you can see. So Unsplash is a fantastic um, copyright free stock photography website. Now you can type in here to find something. So let's say like hotel, because I run a hotel. I could, well, of course you wouldn't wanna use a photo of someone else's hotel to advertise yours, but let's say for example, we were. Um, I can type in whatever term I need and then select an appropriate image click add image and it will add it on right here. There is also the option um, to do paid photography as well. If I wanted to say, delete this image and stock images. If I click over to premium images, these are ones that you actually pay for. So we have free images, premium images and my library, but I'm actually gonna go for this one. I like that one the best. Now this image is a little bit small on the page. So if I wanted to make it bigger, what I would do is I would click on the blue box around the image and I would click and drag to increase the size of the image. Now you can see, however, that my image is overlapping this text, which obviously looks terrible. So we need to fix that. So I'm going to click and drag this item. And let's say, for example, I wanna put it up here, make it a bit smaller. And I wanna get this text out from behind it. So I'm gonna move this over. I'm going to select this text box and bring it down and this image and bring it back over. And maybe I wanted to do that on this side as well. So it looks a bit more consistent and coherent. So I drag that down. You can, by the way, if you click and drag, you can select a few different options. So basically as you click and drag, you'll notice that the blue line changes what it's going over and that shows you which items will be selected. So you can click and drag a few items as opposed to just one at a time. Maybe I want to add another image on this side here, upload file, let's find another lovely um, vertical image. This looks nice. And I want to make it a similar size in order to make that perfectly the same size. I'm just going to drag it over top this one. Make the boxes the same size and then drag it back over here. Put it there. And I need to more align this and I'll do the same over here. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just changing up the width of this so that it a bit better aligns with the item above it. So you'll notice that the blue box here is then aligned with the blue box there, which means that the text just fits better underneath. Whereas you can see on this image here, we have the text is a little bit to the right of the image, so it doesn't align very well. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna drag this box so that it's about the same width as that one above and everything aligns a lot more nicely. I'm also going to delete this because that doesn't look very good. And is that aligned? Not quite. There we are. That's more in the middle. Or is it? Yes, I think it is.
There we go. I think that's all correct. Now I'm going to drag this one down. And this one as well. And that looks a little bit better. Maybe I actually want to drag all of this down by one so I have more space above. So as you can see, that's an example of, oh, you know what else doesn't look right here? Is that the dimensions on these two photos, while they're both vertical images, they're not the same dimension, which looks a little bit sloppy. So let's go into the image editor, click edit, and then edit in here. And you'll open up basically Squarespace's own image editor, kind of like a basic version of Canva. And let's see what dimension this image is right now. Okay, it's a two, three dimension. So I'm just gonna keep that the same. I actually like that dimension on this one. I just wanna make the other image the same dimension so it looks a bit more consistent. So I'm gonna click onto this image, click on edit, edit, and then here and two, three, and you'll notice it cropped off a little bit of left, a little bit on the right. I can drag that around if I wanted to and click on save. Save. And there we are. My images are now look a little bit more clean because they're the same dimensions. Now let's say the next thing which I want on this page is an area about my restaurant and the food that they could eat and maybe a button so they can open up the menu. So let's go ahead and create that. So what I'm going to do is I have two options. I can either Make this section larger by clicking this little blue option on the right hand side and dragging it up and down and it basically adds more rows to the page. The other option which I have is to add a new section. And the reason you would want to maybe add a new section is if you want the background color to look different. So let me show you an example. So I'm gonna click on add section. I'm gonna go for a blank section. And if I go into the edit section on the right hand side, and then I go to colors, you will see that my color palette options, which we had set in the settings area, are now appearing here. So maybe I want it to be sort of this dark chocolatey brown background color section. And maybe here I want to talk about, again, my restaurant and uh, the food which I have on offer and maybe a, menu, a button which opens the menu. So I'm going to first click add block. Let's add an image of our food. Let's see what would be appropriate. This maybe, okay, there's one image, maybe I'll add one more. Upload file. And let's take this image of a table. Oh no, this one looks nice. To drag this image over here, maybe make it a bit bigger and maybe I want them sort of intentionally different sizes. Lovely. Okay, so I have my two images. Then let's add some text to talk about the restaurant. And I'll click and drag the text maybe into the middle. Okay, so I have a small description and now let's click to add a button to open the menu. So instead of learn more, that obviously doesn't make any sense. We need to click on edit and click right instead on view menu brunch menu and then where we want that to go to so I'm going to click on the gear icon and again this brings up some options so we can link to a page on our website to a website outside of our website <laughs> a file which in this case would make the most sense so you would say take the pdf file which has the details of your menu you would click upload file select the file from your computer and click open and that would when people click the button, it would then open that, say, PDF, for example. You can choose if you want to open in a new window or not. Um, so that would be the most appropriate. So I'll just select, honestly, a random image for now, but you would actually upload, say, your PDF menu here. Then we'll click on Save. And the other thing which you might notice is that this button doesn't look great because it's kind of broken the text onto two lines. Now, the fact that Squarespace has done this is a good thing because that means that our website is mobile responsive. So as the page sizes changes, then it makes it a little bit more dynamic. However, if I don't love the look of this, what I can do is just drag the side of the blue box to open up 
that area and make the button a little bit wider. And as the button gets wider, it then has enough space to have all three words on one line, which I like. So let me just drag this over here. We'll drag this a bit closer. And that is my new section with a darker background, a few images, some text, and a button. So let's click Save here and see what this looks like on mobile. Click on the mobile view and we'll see what it looks like. So, not fabulous. <laughs> How Squarespace does it is the order of which you drop items onto the page is the order in which it's arranged on your mobile view. Sometimes it looks really good, sometimes it doesn't look great. I find in this case, it doesn't look good. So let's edit this here. So I'm gonna click on edit, and again, I'm in the mobile view. And so I have the same options which I have on desktop, is to basically drag and drop items around. So I'm gonna click, drag this item down, lodging recommendations. I don't need so much space there. I'm going to drag this option up. I'm gonna drag the next image up. And these two I'll also drag up. And then I don't really want this sort of empty blank space here. So I'll click here to sort of get rid of those other rows. And I think that looks a lot better. On this one, I feel like the, so again, the button, I'm not loving how it's splitting onto two lines. So I'm gonna drag to make the button full width. I also feel like this image is a little bit close to that one. I'm gonna drag this down and maybe I'll make the bottomless branch. Maybe I'll make that center aligned. And maybe also the text too. I think it would look better center aligned on mobile. That looks nicer. Okay, so that is a quick example of how you can edit something on mobile. Basically you have all the same options, click in dragging different bits and pieces around until it fits the way that you want it to look. Now you'll notice if I click save, when I come back to the desktop version, you'll notice that nothing here has changed. But if I go to the mobile version, again, those changes which I made will be reflected there. So when you edit on mobile, it doesn't affect it on desktop and vice versa. Now the one other thing that you might be wondering is, up in the top navigation, in the main navigation section, I have two items, but there's actually sort of four items happening up here. I have a button, I have the brand name, and then I have my navigation options here on the left. So what happens if I want to change that? I'm gonna click into edit, I'm gonna click edit site header, and then here we have sort of the setup and layout for the site header. So first we have the site title and logo. So right now what it's done is when I started the website and Squarespace asked me what's the name of the business, I told it and it automatically created me actually a quite nice text-based logo. Um, if however you have had a logo designed, you can go ahead and click here, click upload file and just select your logo file and it will appear in this place here in place of the actual text. Then when we click into elements, these are the different bits and pieces, the different, I guess, elements that you can add to your top navigation. So we have the button. I can toggle on or off if I want the button. I do personally find, again, buttons are extremely effective for getting your people to do what you want them to do on the website. So it is, in my opinion, very worth having the button on the website. And again, if you wanna learn more about best practices for website navigation, then my training for simple steps to double your site sales will be very helpful. I'll link that above for you. So we have our button, it's on RSVP. I guess if we're doing a hotel website, that doesn't make much sense. So maybe we'll change that to book your stay. We can change the page, which that heads to. Let's see, travel and stay would make sense. So I'm just changing the page that it's going to. And again, when I click in here and have nothing typed in, it gives me the long list of all of the page options which exist on the website. If, for example, you want to link this over to a booking page but you haven't created the booking page yet, it won't exist yet. So create the page first and then come back here to select the page that you want to link it to. The other options which you have are to add your social media links to your top navigation. If you want to have a multilingual website, you can also do that and you would have the option, say like, English, French, German, Swedish, or whatever um, in your top navigation. And then your cart is just a little cart icon. You can change what it looks like. You can choose the different shopping cart options that you want it to have. You can alternatively have it as text. But basically, if you if your 
main purpose of your website is an online store, then I would say it's worth having the shopping icon there. If not, again, this is a hotel website. It wouldn't make much sense. So we're going to toggle that off. So that is elements. Another option I want to show you was the fixed position. So basically when you toggle this on, as you scroll down the page, the logo or the top navigation will always sort of stay at the top. Whereas if you toggle that off, then as you scroll down the page, the navigation will go away with the rest of the page basically. Now, next up, we can also choose what the layout of our navigation looks like both on desktop and mobile. So if I click on header layout, I can check these different options to basically change around. You can see that when I click these, it basically changes up where these different bits and pieces are. I actually liked the original though. I'm gonna go logo middle, navigation left, and then button on the right. And then we also have similar editing options for the mobile version as well, basically changing how exactly things are laid out here too. We're gonna head back to home and then we're gonna head into commerce. So this section of the video is relevant to you if you want to sell something directly through your website. So whether that is physical products, digital products, uh, maybe you want to get paid for someone booking your time. Basically, again, think if you wanna be paid through your website, this is the section to do it in is the commerce section. So let's quickly walk through the four different steps to setting up your store. So the first one is to add your products. So you have a few different options for the products that you can sell through Squarespace. Again, physical goods is something that you have to actually ship that item to the customer or alternatively, customers could potentially pick this up if your customers are local to you. A service is where you basically take a payment for something and then you need to fulfill the service, but nothing say, for example, gets sent in the mail. A digital download is to be expected basically when someone purchases something online and immediately instantly they receive whatever that digital product is a gift card is for if people want to be able to say buy their friends or family a gift card to your shop or to your online store so they can redeem it that is a gift card membership is when you have specific content on your website which is sort of behind a paywall which only people who have paid for a membership can see and receive so this is really appropriate if you're doing some sort of classes or courses it makes a lot of sense video on demand is if you want to sell say access to some videos which you have for example or scheduling this is basically when for example if you wanted to book a coaching call with me and so then you would look into my calendar, you would see the available times, you would see the pricing for a coaching call and you would select to book in and pay for that coaching call and then get it in the calendar. Alternatively, if you are say running something like a yoga studio or a fitness studio, you could also use scheduling to sell um, places to your different classes, whether they want to purchase one class or a bundle of classes, there's a wide variety of options in the scheduling option. To give a really ex easy example for this video, however, we're gonna go for the digital download option. Do know if you want a really in-depth video, however, just specifically on e-commerce, then I do have another video. I'll link that up above for you. So be sure to watch that if you want a bit more in-depth than what I'm gonna go into here on the whole e-commerce topic. So very quickly, we have our product name, the description of exactly what our product is. So go ahead and fill that out. Then you can upload images of your product. I'm going to select, for example, this lovely image of a coffee. For the inventory and file upload, again, this is very relevant to digital downloads specifically. So say for example, they're buying access maybe to this like stock image, then my file upload would be, for example, the stock image. Alternatively, if you're selling a PDF download or something, you would upload the PDF here. Then we need to set the price of the item. Mine right now, because I'm in the UK, automatically is using the GBP symbol, um, but depending on where you are, that will be different. Let's say this is a 50 pound photo, a little bit pricey, but that's good. I'm gonna put it on sale for 45 pounds. So there we are. Then tags and categories. I also have an entire video explaining tags and categories. So again, I'll link that up above for you. But to give you the quick version, basically categories is something like dresses or tops or shoes. And then tags would get more specific about that item. So say for dresses, um, that could be the category. And then tags would be, for example, midi, maxi, or mini dresses, or dresses for a wedding, or dresses for like 
sundresses or something. So categories are more broad and tags are a bit more specific. But again, if you're going to start using that feature, a lot of people get using tags and categories wrong. So again, watch the video up above if you feel like you want some really in-depth organizational options for your products or also tags and categories. It works on blog posts as well, or also even events as well, I believe. Um, again, click the other video to watch and get the tutorial on that. Under visibility, the first option is a featured product. So a featured product is basically if you want a section maybe on your homepage, which is like your most popular items, for example, then you can under your most popular items, you can toggle on the featured product option. And that will then when you add a block to your homepage to say, hey, show all my featured products here, it will pull basically whatever items have this toggled on. As we scroll down under marketing, you will notice that whatever you have written in the description up here and the product name is automatically created as your like SEO title and little description in the snippets of Google so that you can also change if you want to, though honestly, I would recommend just write a really great description that is SEO friendly up there and then you don't need to really do it twice. Then when it comes to checkout, you have two options, custom buttons and custom forms. The situation where you might wanna use a custom form, for example, is maybe you're making a wedding cake and you want some more details from the customer before they, well, actually that doesn't really fit for a digital download. Okay, so let's say you're doing a physical product or service or something, then maybe you want them to fill out a form to give you more details before they go ahead and purchase whatever that wedding cake is, for example. So you could click on the custom form option, create a new form, and then we could say, and then we're going to add the different form fields. So maybe I need to know how many people are eating this cake. And then the options could be zero to 15 guests, etc. And done. Could add another form field of maybe do they do you have any special requests for your cake, for example. And again, you can choose, there's a variety of different form fields. If you say need to ask them, okay, what date and time or what location do I need to drop this cake off at, for example, then you have a variety of different options which you can add to the form. For here, I'm going to save the form. Automatically, when I've created the form there, it is selected. Do know that you can use the same form. You don't need to create a new form for every product. You can have the same form. You would say select, you would click here for custom form on say a new product that you're creating. Then you would go ahead and select, if you have five different form types, you can select which one you want to apply and click apply. So right now the form is enabled and custom button is again, if you just want it to say something slightly different. So right now the automatic is at cart. If you want to say buy now, or you want to say something different, maybe you want to change the language of it, whatever it is, you can go ahead and tweak that there. So that all looks good. I'm going to click on save. Now we have three options here. One is save, publish, and schedule. So save means that we're just going to save this product, but it's not published. It's in draft mode no one else can actually see this. If I go into my inventory, we will see that we have our product here and right now it is hidden for visibility. Let me click in to edit it. If I, however, hit on publish, then this product would suddenly be live on my website and we would see the visibility as public. The other option which you have, which is very handy, is to schedule an item. So let me go back actually to scheduled. We can choose a certain date and time that we want this product to go live. So say for example, you're doing a product drop and you don't wanna have to actually be sitting on your website at the time of the product drop, you just want it to automatically post to the site, then you can set a certain day and time where this product will go live on the website. And that is the option there. As you create more products, there will start to be a long list of products happening down this page here. And you'll notice on the left-hand side, we can see the different types of products which exist. So I've created so far one digital download and that is all. Okay, so we've added one product. Let's now go into payments. So while Squarespace would be your place where you're 
commerce lives and where people can make a transaction, what actually is needed in order to take money from, say, your customer's bank account and put it into your bank account is one of these payment processors. So there's a few different options for payment processors. Stripe is the main one, also tends to have the lowest fee, so it is my favorite personally. So that is that. The other thing you can do here is to change the currency of your store. If you don't want it to be, say, pound sterling, you want it to be USD, for example, or francs or whatever it is, you can select whichever currency you want your store to charge in. And it will automatically be set to whatever place you are in as you are creating the website. Just know that. But you can indeed change it. In order to connect a payment processor, you're gonna click connect here. I won't actually do it for this video because I do wanna keep my strike details nice and private. <laughs> but basically you would click connect and you would follow the prompts. You do need a Stripe account in order to use this. If you don't already have one, it will prompt you to create a Stripe account. And again, Stripe is the tech and the system in the back end, which checks, yes, this customer has enough money on their credit card and then they're gonna take the money from your customer's credit card, they're gonna send it through Stripe and then Stripe will put it into your bank account. So it is the tech which makes that all actually work. I know a lot of people, if you are new to business, you're completely unfamiliar and you had no idea something like that existed, but that is actually, it's not your website which is making the payment happen, it is something like Stripe or PayPal which is making the payment happen. Okay, so going back into settings, get back into commerce. So payments, again, I didn't connect it for the example video, but you will go ahead and connect that. When it comes to subscription plan, um, actually, we're going to get back to this later as well, because there are different Squarespace plans. Some relate to commerce, some don't. So we'll come back to the whole plan. Your This is what this is talking about is like the plan that you pay Squarespace for. There's options with commerce, without commerce. So we'll come back to that again later too. Next, I wanna go into the marketing tab with you. And here are some of the main marketing features which Squarespace has. So the first one which I wanna show you is the promotional pop-up. So this is an example of a promotional pop-up. These are extremely effective for getting people to opt into your email list. So it's really worthwhile doing. So when it comes to pop-ups, it's very convenient inside of some other website builders the pop-ups you have to pay additionally to get pop-ups but with Squarespace it's included which is great the they have some designs happening here you can go ahead and choose which one you prefer let's say that I like this spring sale for example so I'm going to select that one I like that layout then I'm going to go back in to actually change up the design so we can choose what the action is. Right now we have shop women, shop men's. Again, as this is a hotel, that doesn't really make sense. So I'm going to, whoops, go and save. I'm going to say, book your stay. I'm going to delete that one. Click save. So I've decided the other option which you have here is for it to be a newsletter. So that means that it will basically pop up with a field where they can add in their email address. But oops, for this video, I just want it to say, go to a book your stay option. So I can click on save. Back in here. Now the content needs to change. Spring sale, say 50% on selected items going to change up the text here and say something like so, maybe, there we are, save. I want to add an image to this so it looks a bit more visually interesting, so I'm going to click on image and upload image, and this one looks very appropriate. We will give it a second to load. It's loaded into the background and I think that looks fantastic. So I'm gonna go back. And now style. So pop-ups are the one item where the site styles isn't sort of where I had showed you before. So I'm gonna click on style here. And one really important thing, which I am noticing when I look at this pop-up is that the contrast between the white text and the image of the background are not that great and so I'd like to change that up so I'm going to go into background color and I can see whoops no sorry not there that is overlay sorry custom overlay color I'm going to darken this up a bit like that I'm just dragging here and again you can use the color wheel to choose any variety of colors your little heart desires I'm going to go to the gray, maybe even black, 
And this is changing the strength of that overlay. So I'm going to go for here so I can better read the text with the image still appearing in the background. Feel free if you're unhappy with the look of your pop-up to scroll through the different options here and change up whichever ones you please. Now I'm gonna hit save. And actually I realized I was missing one thing inside the action. We need to choose where this goes. So say when someone clicks the book your stay button, where should it go? So let's say for example, that we have a page which is travel and stay, perfect. I'm going to select that page. Um, all of your pages, as you build out different pages of your website, all of your pages are going to start to appear here. So we're gonna click on save there, head back, promotional pop-up, oops, and that is good. The announcement bar is another common option which people use to draw attention to something on their website. So I'm going to go to enable announcement bar. It says, this is an announcement. <laughs> Say for example, Dynasty deal, details this way. Actually don't want the change. That's an example of the announcement bar for you. Again, the style settings for that are in the style area, which I showed you earlier. So if you don't love, say for example, the background color here or the font type there, that can be changed in the style settings. Now, when people click on said announcement bar, it needs to go somewhere. So if you click on the gear icon, there's a few different options of where you can send this to. So the first one is maybe you want this to automatically open their um, email option and have it send you a message, for example. So maybe you put in the your email address, the subject line, maybe it's like new stay inquiry. Um, and if you wanted to automatically write something into the actual email or to CC anyone, you can pop all those details in. The other option which you have is to send them to a certain website address. And so typically I use this option when I want to send someone to a page off of my website. So maybe for example, I wanted to send them to my Instagram page. Then what I would do is I would paste in the link to my Instagram, for example, and that would take them there. I do also like to toggle on the open in a new window tab whenever I do that because whenever I get someone to leave my website, I preferably want them to still spend some time on my website. So I do want it to open in a new tab. Whereas if I was just leading them to a page on my website, it wouldn't make so much sense for it to open in a new tab. You can also upload a file here. So that is basically if they clicked on the announcement bar, then something would automatically download onto their computer. I wouldn't suggest using this for your email opt-ins, for example, because in this case, you don't collect their email address in order for them to get the download. So this maybe would make sense for some sort of brochure, but I would even still argue that that would be best to put behind an email opt-in because that will build your email list. But you do have the option to click upload a file and upload whatever type of file your little heart desires there. Then we have page. I've showed you this one earlier. Basically, you can select from any of the pages which currently exist on your website and then have it go to the page. So if you want to link to a page on your website, I use the page option. If you want to link to something off of your website, I use the web address option. And then the phone number option. This is, for example, if someone's on a mobile phone and they click on this, then it would automatically open the number and start calling you. So that's handy if you get a lot of people visiting on a mobile who need to get in touch with you by phone. Next up, let's quickly talk about scheduling. So scheduling is Squarespace's option for booking appointments. So this is similar to if you're familiar with Calendly, it's basically the Squarespace version of Calendly. So this is where you can let me just close this set up different appointment types and set your availability for those appointments. So for example, I could head into availability and I could set up that I'm free maybe for bookings, for maybe at my hotel, I want to have weddings. And so I want people to be able to book automatically on my website, a sort of like a uh, hotel visit to consider it for their wedding. I could set specific hours that I'm available. So if you have the same hours every week, you can tick, tick this box here and it will automatically fill in whatever hours you've set, say Monday to Sunday, into the calendar always. Uh, alternatively, if you don't have regular hours, then you can save it and switch to specific days, which then I can come down here and I can basically input 
which days and times I want to have availability. So if I want to change this, I would just click in, change this maybe to 1 p.m. Maybe I'm taking the afternoon off that day. There we are. And then I could go in and again, fill in all of the days and times I'm free. Or alternatively, I can use the regular hours option, which is honestly probably easier. The other thing which you can do is if you do say 9 a.m. and I click save regular hours, it will fill in here, but I can also change these. If say, for example, I'm gonna take a holiday that week, I can just edit there. So lots of options for setting your calendar. You can also sync this up to your Google Calendar or Apple Calendar, or whatever it is, so that if you already have something booked out in your calendar, then it won't double book you, which is really convenient. Then we're gonna go back here and then into appointment types. This is the other second important aspect which you need to have when you are using the scheduling. So we have two options, new type of service or new type of group class. If, for example, I was going to do the example of the hotel needing to have brides and grooms come and look at the location for their wedding, that would be a service. Whereas a class would be an example if you wanna host a group painting class or a group yoga class or something, that would be an example of that. So I'm just gonna go to new service. I'm gonna name it. So let's say for example, it's wedding tour. We can set however long we want that option to go for. So maybe we want it to be 30 minutes long. But the other thing which I really like is you can block off time before and after. So if you want maybe to give yourself a little bit of leeway and make sure it's like, okay, we're gonna give ourselves 20 minutes after just in case this ends up going a bit longer, then I won't run into my next appointment, for example. You can choose if there's a price for this, so if they have to pay to make the appointment or not. So that is an option there as well. And we're going to go to create appointment types. Now I have my appointment and I have the availability for said appointment. So then I would just give my people or put on my website the scheduling page link and that would allow them to book in with me. Next up, we have the assets library. This is basically the area where all of the images or videos which I've uploaded onto my website live. So it just is basically a library of all the different bits and pieces that you have on your website. Analytics is where you can see all the details on say like the traffic to your website and what countries your website's being visited from. Obviously, as this is a brand new website, this is very uninteresting at the moment, but over time do come into analytics, play around back here and see the different options so you can learn about the people visiting your website and how they're finding your website as well. Then the profiles option, that basically is for say, if you have people purchased through your website or subscribers who opt into your email list or whatever, repeat customers, first time customers, maybe if you're accepting donations through your website, you would have donors here. So as people sort of fill in the information in different areas of your website, say if they opt into one of your opt-in gifts, they would become a subscriber. If they have purchased something for the first time, they would automatically come here under first time customers, etc. So this sort of self-populates when information is inputted into your website through other means. And so you can come through here with time and look through say a list of all your subscribers or all your first time customers or whatever it is. Think of this a little bit like a CRM system within your website. Next, let's head into our website settings and let's talk about launching your website to the world. So let's say you followed the tutorial, you've built your website, and you're really happy with how things look now. Next thing you need to do is launch the website to the world. So how exactly do you do that? Head into settings and then scroll down to billing. Then we have our Squarespace subscription options. So right now, again, I'm on a trial, but let's say I wanted to make the website live. What I would do is I would click on website and I would upgrade to a paid plan. In terms of which plan to choose, I would say that most people fall under the business plan. It is the most common one. It also says most popular there. If you, however, want to sell items on your website, going into the commerce plans might make a bit more sense for you. So say, for example, if you had an online store where you're selling digital products or physical products or something of that sort, you can basically scroll through here and see the different options. If you have some sort of online store though, again, a commerce plan, one of these these two might make more sense for you. When it comes to the personal plan, it's missing some of the things like the premium blocks or taking any sort of payments through the website isn't possible on the personal plan. In terms of if you'll actually use the premium blocks and integrations or not, 
Go ahead, build out your website. When you do use a block, which is a premium block, it will make mention of it, that it's a premium block as you're building. And then you just know that if you want to use that block, you will need to go for something like the business plan or higher when you go to make your website live. Do know that you can use any block or any feature when you're on the free trial. It's just when you go to make the website live, that's when you would need to choose whether or not you actually wanna use that item if you just wanna pay for say the personal plan, for example. I would say that it is quite worth your while to pay annually for one reason especially. Something which I can give you through this video is my code PAGE10, P-A-I-G-E-1-0. When you go to pick a plan and enter that code, you'll get 10% off your first payment. If you pay annually, that will get you 10% off your whole plan for the year. If you pay monthly, that will just get you 10% off that first month's payment. Also, if you pay annually, I believe you also get a free domain as well, whereas I'm not sure. Yeah, no, that doesn't exist if you do the monthly, pay monthly plan. And your domain, by the way, is your like your website.com. Um, that's what a domain is. So go ahead and select the plan that you would prefer. It will ask you for your credit card details and everything. When you click save and continue, it will then guide you through the steps to actually make the website live. Because I'm not making it live for this tutorial though, we're just gonna head back into here and I'm gonna show you the important bit, which is your site availability. Right now, automatically your website is private. No one online can see it. When you want to make it public, however, you'll notice that option is grayed out right now. I could click upgrade to publish and I would just set once I have paid for my Squarespace plan, I can select the public option. And then that's when the website will actually be live and people can go to my website. Now, I hate to break it to you, but though you maybe now have the basics of website building down, your site still might come out looking a little bit bland if you don't really put some thought into the design and style of the website. Want to know what looks good right now on websites? Watch this video next and I'll walk you through the main site design trends right now so you can incorporate a few of them into your website and wow those new site visitors.